You're watching the Brother Henry and You Show. Engaging. Informative. Inspirational. Enjoy today's program. Welcome to the Brother Henry and Youth Show. My name is Henry Harris. So delighted to be with you today. Let me, let me start out with asking you this question. Have you ever asked yourself, why me? Why did I have to be the one to suffer or to go through such tragedy and tribulations in your life? Have you ever asked yourself, where was God when I needed him the most? I'm sure many of us would say yes. Why does it seem like God is so far off? Why does it seem like God is distant? If you've ever felt this way, this interview is for you today. And today I'm joined here with my dear friend, Pastor Rick Thomas. He's the senior pastor of Zena Baptist Church here in Zena, Oklahoma. We actually have an audience here tonight, and I appreciate you guys for coming, being in attendance. Pastor Rick, thank you for the opportunity to be You're here. You're welcome. Um, you know, a lot of people are hurting uh, in various ways and different ways. And I think the first question I would like to ask you, Pastor, uh, trust is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, what part does trust play in the lives of those who may be hurting? Well, I mean, trust uh, is something that obviously we, we talk about trust being something that's earned. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> And I guess to say in the simplest form, there is an aspect of that between us and God that yeah. it is earned because we, we begin to trust him at the point of salvation or even, even just before that when we begin to, should I do this and can I do this? And, mm -hmm. But then God responds in a way that draws us closer to him and we begin to trust him more and more. And then we go through difficult times and, and we begin to trust him more. And the more difficult times we go through, as we lean upon him, the stronger that trust gets uh, becomes. And so I think there is a, a strong aspect of that. I recently heard a, a testimony, or not a testimony, but a quote from someone, and I can't remember who it is. It's not original with me. But when we make a, when we make a commitment to somebody, then we actually are creating trust. And when we make that commitment and that we begin to trust, then we are creating hope in yeah. that person. So, you know, I, that was made for relationships of husbands and wives and yeah. friendships, but the same is true with God. Yeah. He committed to us first long before we ever committed to Him. Amen. And that trust is there if we'll hang on to it. It's amazing. Even yeah. when we don't see that trust, and, you know, I believe trust also grows. Mm -hmm. You know, you speak in terms of relationships. I think cause if you're with your spouse, uh, you trust them, but also trust can be progressive as well. Mm -hmm. That um, the more you know, you, you know about your spouse, the more mm -hmm. you grow in the area of trust. I often think about trust as well. Is that let's just use this for example. When many of you came here tonight, I didn't see any of you um, get on your knees and check the legs of the benches <laughs> to see if it's going to hold you up. Well, why did they do that? Well, the reason why you didn't do that because you had trust that when you sat down that it will hold you up. And I believe that when we're hurting and we're going through certain things in our life, we have to have that same type of trust that uh, regardless of what it looks like or what it may appear to look like, you know, I trust God. Um, you know, you're talking about uh, things that people go through. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms chapter 13, uh, verse 1 and 2. Uh, David says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How many here have prayed that <laughs> prayer before? I know I have. How long will you hide your face from me? Verse 2 says, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Um, and day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will, 
my enemy triumph over mm -hmm. me. And I believe uh, I've been there a time or two where we've all asked that question, Pastor, um, how long. Um, can hurt create a sense of this disconnection? Because I believe that's what David had here. Yeah, it, it certainly can. Uh, when we're hurting, um, whatever that pain is, okay, it's as simple as there's a fire and I got my fingers too close to it and I yeah. remo remove it from the pain. We begin to learn these things as little children. We withdraw from pain. Mm -hmm. And so a little child that's in the daycare, he's picking on me all the time, so I want to stay away from him so he doesn't pick on me. And all of our life, we begin to develop that same mentality that I withdraw from what hurts me. And so whenever I go into a time in my life where I'm hurting like more than I've ever hurt before, whatever that may be, uh, a young Christian may wonder, well, why do I feel like I'm all alone? Because yeah. I thought that once I became a Christian, God was going to answer all my questions and my fears, and it would all be, uh, excuse the hokey uh, hillbilly <laughs> language, but yeah. hunky-dory. Yeah. <laughs> and <clears throat> But it, yeah. that's not the way that it is. Yeah. Jesus said in this life, I had trouble, you're going to have trouble. Oh, and I, yeah. uh, the tribulation in this life is simply because we're in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. But none of us want to experience that trouble or that pain, so we back away from it. And so even whenever uh, we know that God is there and we trust Him, mm -hmm. there's still an aspect of us that as we pull away, we don't realize we're pulling away from God mm -hmm. when we need to be running to Him mm -hmm. and not trying to get back in trouble. But there is this part of us as human beings that we just love pity parties too. Yeah. So that's a problem in and of itself. We like to throw our pity party. So just leave me alone until yeah. I'm done with my pity party. Then I'll come out and I'll smile again. Yeah. But that's not what God wants us to do, but that's what we too often do. Amen. So. <laughs> I call it a wilderness experience where we feel yeah. like when we're hurt, or there's been times when I've been hurt, Pastor, where I felt like, I was the only one that was going through that. How many of you have felt mm. that way before? <clears throat> yeah. That when you're hurt and you're going through some type of trial in your life, I'm the only one that's going through. I think what you're saying is we're going to self-pity mode. Woe is me. <laughs> why, yeah. why am I the only one? But the truth is exactly. you're not the only one going through no. it. And our God is there with us all along. So in what ways can the body of Christ bring healing to those who may be hurting? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, a big part of that would be just listening more so than trying to have the answer yeah. for them. Yeah. Because how many of you have been in a situation where somebody, they tried to comfort you by doing all the talking? Yeah. <laughs> they knew how you were feeling, uh -huh. and they tried to comfort you by doing all the talking when all you really wanted to do was for them to just shut up and just listen. Uh -huh. And so I can share with them how I'm feeling. If we'll, have, if we'll recognize this, uh, I don't know if you're aware of the anatomy, but God gave us one mouth and two ears. I wonder if there's a key there. Twice as much listening mm -hmm. as talking when someone is hurting. It's, maybe, it's, maybe it's as simple as that. Yeah. But not thinking that we have all the answers. And you don't have to have all the answers. When somebody's hurting, uh, just a, a big ear to listen, a shoulder to cry on, and, and recognizing that we don't have all the answers. Yeah. God has the answers, but I don't have all the answers. Amen. The uh, next question is similar to the first question. Uh, we talked about what part can trust play. Let's talk about faith for a second. What part mm. can faith play for those who are hurting? <clears throat> well, I think faith plays probably the biggest part <clears throat> because walking in Christ and studying His Word this, uh, this is a part of our uh, sanctification, becoming more like Him. Mm -hmm. We have to be in God's Word in order to know what it says about what we'll face in this world. Mm -hmm. The sufferings in the world are there, and they're always going to be there mm -hmm. until Christ comes again. But our faith has to be rooted in the Word of God, and it has to be rooted in the truths of God's Word. What does Jesus say? I, what God says in His Word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. 
So when does that mean? I mean, so breaking that down, does that mean I'll never leave you nor forsake you when you're on the mountaintop mm -hmm. or when you're kind of halfway up the mountain or when you're in the valley? Or does it mean all of the above? He will never leave us nor forsake us at any point. Mm -hmm. And knowing that ahead of time helps me to know that uh, I don't understand why this is happening to me. But the thing about my faith is I know that God is sovereign mm -hmm. and he's in control. And that's the aspect of my faith that is most important when I'm going through a, a trial or a tribulation or suffering is that I understand he is sovereign and I give him the, the, I give him the freedom like I need to give him freedom. Yeah. But in my own mind, yeah. I, okay, God, you're sovereign and you're allowing this to happen for a reason. Even though I don't understand it, I'm praying, Lord, show me what I can learn from this. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> there are those times when it is so... When, when you're in so much despair and your heart is broken mm -hmm. that you can't hardly cry out anything. Mm -hmm. And there's where the scripture is uh, comforting that says we don't even know what we're going to cry out or pray. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit brings utterance before the Father so that what we are experiencing, even though we can't say it, mm -hmm. gets to the throne room of God and God is able to meet that need. One author talked about it as being the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if that was C.S. Lewis, or, but it was a, a long time ago. And that dark night of the soul is whenever I seem to be all alone and God seems to be at a distance. But I don't think that I ever want to forget this. But there have been times that I've not practiced this. Yeah. And when I don't, that's when I'm in despair. God inhabits the praises of his people. If in those times when I'm in despair or hurting, I begin to praise God, and I mean praise God, I don't want anybody else around. I just want it to be He and I. And when I'm praising Him, and my heart is breaking, and I'm praising Him, anyway, it's reminding me that He's bigger than the problem. Mm -hmm. And just like when Peter was walking on the water, if my, if my focus is on the problem, it looks insurmountable. It looks like this mountain that I can never get across. Mm -hmm. But if I get my, my eyes off of the mountain and I get it back on the, the, the Lord of creation, the one who can walk on water, Amen. the one who can actually protect me in the storm, then I can reach out to him. He'll hold my hand and bring me through whatever problem it is. And I'll grow as a result of it. And then I'll be able to minister to other people. Because that's the whole reason for us going through them in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. that talks about, you know, he allows us to go through these things. I'm just paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. But that's so that when we get through them, he can use us to minister to somebody else. Well, the flip side of that coin is somebody else already went through it. Yeah. So now I'm going through it. God can use somebody to minister to me. Now I've gone through it. He can use me to minister to somebody else. And you've gone through it, and I've helped you, and now he'll use you to minister to somebody else. And all the way from uh, the time of Jesus' death and resurrection, that's the way it's been. Because of the indwelling spirit, we have the power to minister and, and meet the needs of somebody. Not because of our ability, but because of his indwelling presence. Wow, that's amazing. That's powerful. Uh, I think it's very important to be, to be able to relate to all those who may be hurt. How mm -hmm. important do you think it is? Uh, for believers to be able to relate to all those who may be hurting is, is our last question. Well, I think it's important to relate to them, but I think it's also important not to exaggerate. Yeah. I know how you're feeling, Henry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really? When did you lose Do all, you really th know? all three of your family members in a car wreck? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd never had that happen before. But, you know, I have a friend who she lost her husband and two children in the same car wreck, and she survived. How do you deal with that kind of loss? Mm -hmm. Well, she was a good Christian lady, and, and uh, yeah, she wrestled with that for a while. And then God began to use her on a speaking circuit to where she was speaking to others who've lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. And God helped her to relate to them, whereas I couldn't have related to them. I've, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, uh, I've never lost uh, a loved one that's close within my family other than uncles and aunts and grandparents. So I don't know how to relate to that. Yeah. But... Some of you have related, you can relate to some of those things. And I believe that God and his sovereignty works it out to where if, if Frank has this issue he's going through, then Susie 
God pairs them up in some way. And if Susie's sensitive to the Holy Spirit, she can minister to Frank, whereas you or I could never minister to Frank. Mm -hmm. And that's just the sovereignty of God. And God is in the business of doing that. In fact, it's just miraculous the way he does that sometimes. That's that amazing. I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, that was an awesome interview. <laughs> Hi, my name's Heather. Thank you for watching the Brother Henry and You Show today. If you've enjoyed the show today, visit us at facebook.com backslash the Brother Henry and You Show. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.